Welcome back, Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog. This is our 10th and final module on site survey. And we're gonna wrap this up and talk about Manual J software and some of the reports you get out of those software. So a few things when you talk about uh, site survey, right, in this form, things that you wanna spend the most time on and making sure they're correct are your design temperatures, the fenestration we talked about, your duct work, make sure you examine the location, how well it's sealed and what the R values are, and then of course any ceilings that are under attics very important large surface areas and these are the things that impact the load the most this is where you spend the most time in your site survey things like uh, appropriately insulated floors to unconditioned basements or um, if you're off a little bit in the r value of the wall if you, instead of r19 is r21 or something along those lines um, or maybe you missed uh, one or two large plants in the internal gains these things are not going to impact the load as much as you would think it's not going to change the size of the equipment like those first four things I talked about. All right. So spend those things, uh, your time on those things at the top of this chart. This is right out of Akka's Bob house, Bob's house. Um, it's a great reference and talking about depending on the design and how things change the load, how it impacts the size of the equipment and the design process further down the line for fictional Bob's house. Right. I guess we could have done uh, Chris's house, but uh, we'll see how this goes here. So, Make sure you do aggressive load calculations. Do not manipulate the outdoor design temperatures, right? So in Massachusetts, I know based on what I'm allowed to size for outside, if I hit a 14 degree delta T between my design temperature inside and outside in, in cooling, I know I've gone too far, right? Very simple, quick, easy check to see what the temperature difference is for cooling load, okay? Anything past that is outside of design. We're designing above our 99% design temperatures. Always make sure you take full credit for efficient construction features, like overhangs, like I was talking about before. Don't ignore window shading. If you enter windows and doors that have shades and enter them as no shading, it really could impact the load because it's all of those windows across the entire first, second, third, fourth floor, okay? And last thing on here, don't apply any sort of safety factor to the result. There's already so much rounding in the software the guy that wrote Manual J, right, Hank Rakowski, when I went to one of his classes, said that, that that rounding, because it has to stop at a certain decimal point, already includes almost 20% oversizing in the software alone. And then Manual S will let you oversize X amount as well. So make sure you do an aggressive load calculation and don't just uh, do the homeowner a solid and put another half ton or a ton in because it's going to really impact the efficiency of the system and the comfort of the home, all right? Now... I really want to harp on this. This is very important. Don't use Manual J version 7 or short forms or anything else that estimates loads. Just because it's based on ACA Manual J does not mean it's approved by ACA Manual J. You want to look for that logo in the middle of this screenshot here, okay? These are some examples and ones that I've used over the years that are approved by ACA, like WriteSoft. I've used WriteSoft for 15 to 20 years. Highly recommend it if you like to draw out like uh, AutoCAD, you like to draw out the rooms. It's a nice visual way to see that. There is AdTech and Elite. Those are also great design suites that you're able to uh, list everything out like a worksheet if you're used to the worksheet style. I've also used Carmel with my iPad. It's a great program for block loads. Unfortunately, if you're trying to do room by room, you almost have to set it up like separate loads all the way through. It can be a little tougher, okay? You can lose track of where you're at. CoolCalc is actually a great tool that is free to use for uh, to use a software. You only have to pay when you're going to print off the reports for code or, or rebate purposes, right? Avenir, I'm not so familiar with. That's also a very similar 3D style way of building out these rooms. Um, it's great for those design engineers and the ones that like the AutoCAD style. Okay, maybe not floor plan, but 3D style. A little bit more expensive. All right. So let me show you a couple of reports here. This is right out of Carmel. This is my house actually that we've used as the uh, study home here. So you can see I did this load calc and the information you're looking for is square footage, total cooling load, total heating load. Of course you wanna break that up in the cooling side to be um, your latent and sensible gains. That helps you select the right size piece of equipment and cooling, especially on a ducted system. All right, but you also wanna take a look at the percentages and make sure you didn't miss anything. So as an example, if I know I have skylights, and on my report it says zero, then I miss the skylight. Very, very quick and easy thing to check, okay? Also, uh, ideas like like um, partition walls, if it goes to like a, a, a garage. 
<coughs> sorry about that. Obviously, um, it, garage is not outdoors, but it is unconditioned. You want to make sure you account for that partition wall. Obviously, I have zero for partition walls because I don't have a garage out there or unconditioned spaces. All right. Take a look at ceilings, floors, infiltration, all the stuff we talked about in your site survey form, right? Make sure you didn't miss anything. And the same thing on the heated side. So you can see I need about a three ton system for cooling. We'll get into the specifics on the manual S side another day. Um, and somewhere around 90,000 BTUs in heating. Now I've gone through and changed the information, like change the, the leakage of the home. It didn't change the size of the equipment if I'm only going one spot to another like we talked about in that module, all right? If I drastically changed it and said this home was tight when it's really semi-loose, because I've had some weatherization done, not quite loose, even though it was built in 1880, all right? You can see here that if I go from semi-loose to average or semi-loose to loose, it doesn't change the size of the load calc and size of the equipment much. If I was to say it was tight, it would drastically change this, maybe in half, okay? So you just have to be close, don't worry about it. This is the information that you need to pull off to put on your scorecard as far as trying to keep track and helping you in the design process, okay? Also, what's nice about Carmel is they give you some great charts and you can see if these pies are way off and some things to look for is infiltration, ceiling, insulation, windows and doors. If you see there's a very small sliver on those things that impact the, the load the most, then you should go back and double check those numbers, all right? Um, also, it's, it's very easy to tap out the floor plan from above if you don't have a floor plan already or if you're not drawing the floor plan like you would on WriteSoft. With CoolCalc, you can actually use Google Maps. Um, it gives you a generic value. It autofills based on the construction materials on, that infor uh, on, that, um, on the town assessor's information, right? So when the building was built and if there's anything that was changed, like obviously my house has changed over the last 130 something years. So I have to go in and change and update that information to give me the right info. So you can see here, if I didn't, it would give me a four ton system in cooling and about a, 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 over 100,000 BTU uh, heat loss. So you have to make sure you go in and update those windows, that insulation, how well it's sealed, all those things we've been talking about. Otherwise, if you just use the software and, you know, in 1880, I'm willing to bet that's actually what I had for heat loss, all right? So make sure you actually updated that info. Now, this is not my home. This is just a, a model house we did down in Providence, Rhode Island. You can see on this, this ranch-style house, this is right out of WrightSoft. This is the typical summary page that you would get. You would get the equipment load and heating. That's on the left-hand side, right? And then your cooling on the right-hand side. And you can see they split it up. Sensible plus latent is your total equipment load, all right? Total load and cooling. So it gives you uh, the information that you need to then go and select the right size piece of equipment without drastically oversizing and meeting the International Residential Code for ACA Manual S. If you have some, uh, don't have much experience with, let's say, WriteSoft or some of the other software programs out there, I wrote a nice blog uh, about WriteSoft and some of the, the defaults that are built in. So a lot of people have a tough time trusting software. Remember, this is a calculator, and this is the reason you took this site survey class, right? Um, you need to make sure that you put the right inputs into the calculator so the calculator can spit out the right outputs, all right? It's only as, that software is only as good as the information you put into it. So make sure you change those defaults and ch update the information for those sites that you're working on. Um, all of these software programs I talked about earlier give you that same output info. ACA Manual J version 8 takes all those things into account and they give you the heat loss and the heat gain, latent and sensible. It's what you need to select the right size piece of equipment out there. So take a look at those additional resources. And of course, if you have any questions on anything, maybe I didn't cover because I went quickly over this, hit me up on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I look forward to uh, concluding this session with you. Thanks for sticking in there with me. I think we wrapped it up really nice. And I'm looking forward to uh, continuing on explaining the design process to you in future modules. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your support.